The search for extraterrestrial intelligence, commonly known as SETI, is an exploratory science that combines the efforts of astronomers, physicists and computer scientists aiming to answer one of humanity's most intriguing questions. Are we alone in the universe? At the heart of SETI's mission lies the use of sophisticated telescopes and technology to listen for signals from civilizations on distant planets. This quest is not about science fiction. Rather, it's grounded in the rigorous application of the scientific method, seeking evidence of intelligent life beyond Earth. By scanning the cosmos for signals, whether they be radio waves or laser light, SETI researchers hope to find proof that there are other technologically advanced civilizations in the galaxy. SETI scientists use radio telescopes as big as football fields to search the stars for signals from alien civilizations. These giant dishes scan the cosmos, listening for any hint of communication across the massive emptiness of space. It's a quest to find others like us, using the very same technology that connects us here on Earth. But as we reach out into the unknown, protecting our own communications becomes just as important. It's not just about finding alien signals, it's about keeping our digital world secure. That's where the power of encryption comes into play. Just as SETI scientists protect their discoveries with the most advanced technology, we too can protect our online activity. This is crucial, not only for scientists, but for anyone navigating through the internet. Imagine this, We've just received a groundbreaking signal from an advanced civilization millions of light years away. The first thing we do, secure it, ensure it's safe from interference or theft. This is no different from how we should treat our personal data online. And that's where our sponsor, Surfshark VPN, enters the story. Surfshark VPN isn't just any tool, it's like the digital equivalent of a high security vault. It encrypts your internet connection creating a secure and impenetrable tunnel for your data. This means that all your online activities, from the videos you stream to the websites you visit, are shielded from the prying eyes of hackers, advertisers, and even curious internet service providers. Imagine you're delving into the depths of the internet, exploring content from distant lands, searching tirelessly for the best deals, or even potentially booking your very first round trip to the moon. Surfshark ensures that you're doing all this securely, privately and without a trace. It's almost like having your own personal encryption system, similar to the sophisticated technologies SETI employs to protect their cosmic discoveries from being intercepted or corrupted. And now, you can secure your digital life with Surfshark and get a special offer. Enter the code SPACEDUST to get three extra months for free. Just visit surfshark.deals SPACEDUST to redeem this exclusive offer. Plus, with Surfshark's 30-day money-back guarantee, there's no risk in giving it a try. Secure your privacy with Surfshark today. Over the years, SETI projects have detected a few signals that initially stirred excitement and curiosity among scientists and the public alike. One of the most famous is the WOW signal, detected in 1977. This signal was a strong, narrowband radio signal received by the Big Ear Radio Telescope at Ohio State University. Named after the astonished remark made by astronomer Jerry R. Amon, who spotted the alphanumeric sequence 6 EQWJ5 on the printout representing the signal's intensity, its origin remains a mystery despite various theories, including natural and human-made sources. Although it is the archetype of signals SETI researchers hope to find, no similar signal has been detected since, leaving its origin debated. Another intriguing detection is the series of fast radio bursts, FRBs, which are intense flashes of radio waves from various parts of the sky and at distances indicating extragalactic origins. Although not primarily thought to be signals from intelligent civilizations, more likely attributed to highly magnetized neutron stars or black hole activity, their exact nature continues to puzzle astronomers. These detections, while not providing conclusive evidence of extraterrestrial intelligence, have significantly advanced our understanding of the cosmos. They have honed the capabilities of SETI projects, leading to better instrumentation and data analysis techniques. Moreover, they have stimulated a vital discussion about the nature of intelligent life and our readiness to understand or interpret a genuine signal from another civilization. 
each signal, whether resolved or unexplained, imbues the scientific community with a deeper sense of the complexities of the universe, encouraging a persistent quest for knowledge and the continuous monitoring of the skies. Scientists have developed several criteria to differentiate between signals produced by intelligent life and those arising from natural cosmic phenomena. This discernment is crucial in the SETI field, where the goal is to detect evidence of extraterrestrial civilizations through their technological signatures. One key aspect they look for is the nature of the signal itself. Natural cosmic sources, such as stars, pulsars and quasars, emit a wide range of frequencies, producing a kind of white noise. In contrast, a signal from intelligent life is expected to be narrowband, meaning it occupies a very specific frequency, akin to how a radio station operates on a particular channel. This specificity suggests a deliberate attempt to communicate or an artificial origin. Additionally, Scientists search for patterns or modulations within the signals that natural processes couldn't easily produce, such as regular pulses or a sequence that encodes information. They also consider the signal's behavior over time. For instance, if it repeats but with intervals indicative of a deliberate pattern, rather than the periodic emissions we might observe from rotating neutron stars, pulses. Localization is another factor. A signal emanating from a point in space with no known natural sources capable of producing such a signal, especially if it's in the vicinity of a star similar to our sun, might indicate it's of artificial origin. Finally, the scientific community relies on verification. A genuine signal from an intelligent source should be verifiable by independent observatories, eliminating the chance of local interference or equipment malfunctions being mistaken for extraterrestrial communication. Through these rigorous analyses and checks, scientists aim to sift through the cosmic cacophony, discriminating the celestial symphony of natural phenomena from potential whispers of intelligent life. Optical SETI, which searches for signals in the form of pulsed or continuous laser light rather than radio waves, offers several advantages that complement the traditional radio wave search. One of the primary benefits of optical SETI is the potential for high directivity. Laser signals can be incredibly focused, meaning that if an advanced civilization were aiming a laser beam at Earth, the signal could be more easily identifiable against the backdrop of natural cosmic light. This focus also allows for the transmission of information across vast interstellar distances with relatively little energy loss compared to radio waves, which spread out more as they travel. Moreover, the Earth's atmosphere is transparent to certain optical frequencies, similar to how it is with radio waves. This makes it feasible to detect optical signals using ground-based telescopes, although adaptive optics or space-based telescopes could provide even clearer reception by overcoming atmospheric distortion. Optical SETI also opens up the possibility of detecting very short pulses of light. Such pulses, lasting only fractions of a second, might be distinguishable from the constant light of stars and galaxies, offering a clear signal of technological origin. Advanced civilizations might prefer these optical beacons for long-distance communication, as they could, theoretically, encode a large amount of information in a very brief transmission, offering efficiency in terms of both energy and bandwidth. The exploration of optical SETI does not diminish the value of radio searches, but rather expands the toolkit available to scientists. By casting a wider net, monitoring a broader spectrum of electromagnetic radiation, humanity increases its chances of detecting a signal from an extraterrestrial intelligence, should such signals exist and be directed towards us. This multi-wavelength approach enriches the search strategy, ensuring that we're not overlooking potential communication channels that other civilizations might favor. The SETI initiative, while ambitious and driven by the profound question of whether we are alone in the universe, faces several challenges and criticisms that shape its progress and perception. A primary challenge is the vastness of space itself, which makes the quest akin to finding a needle in a cosmic haystack. The distances between stars and galaxies are so immense that even signals traveling at the speed of light could take decades, centuries, or even millennia to reach us, raising questions about the timing and longevity of such searches. Moreover, the assumption about the nature of extraterrestrial communications, particularly the reliance on radio waves or laser light as the medium, has been a point of criticism. 
advanced civilizations could be using technologies or methods of communication far beyond our current understanding or detection capabilities. This technological mismatch could mean we are simply not equipped to recognize or interpret alien signals, even if they are directed at us. Funding and resources also constitute a significant hurdle. SETI projects often struggle to secure consistent long-term funding as they do not promise immediate or tangible returns. This financial instability can hinder the acquisition of cutting-edge technology and the sustained, methodical searching required. In addition to practical challenges, SETI faces philosophical and existential criticisms. Some argue that, given the current inability to address and resolve our planet's own crises, resources devoted to seeking extraterrestrial life might be better allocated to more immediate human concerns. There's also the argument concerning the potential risks of contacting advanced civilizations without understanding their intentions or capabilities. Despite these challenges and criticisms, SETI's pursuit encapsulates a deep human curiosity and an admirable commitment to exploring the unknown. The initiative continues to adapt, seeking not just new signals, but new ways of understanding and interacting with the cosmos, driven by the hope that one day we might not only find that we are not alone, but also become part of a broader cosmic community. The Fermi Paradox is a conundrum that highlights the contradiction between the high probability of extraterrestrial civilizations existing in the vast, billion-star galaxy of the Milky Way and the lack of evidence or contact with such civilizations. Named after physicist Enrico Fermi, who famously posed the question, where is everybody? During a casual lunch conversation in 1950, the paradox raises poignant questions about the nature and existence of alien life. The significance of the Fermi paradox in the search for extraterrestrial life lies in its ability to spark a deep and multifaceted investigation into the factors that might explain this glaring absence of contact. It motivates scientists to examine the Drake equation more closely, which estimates the number of active, communicative extraterrestrial civilizations in the Milky Way galaxy. The paradox encourages the consideration of various hypotheses ranging from the possibility that intelligent life is extremely rare to the suggestion that technological civilizations may tend to self-destruct or perhaps advanced beings choose not to contact us for their reasons or due to a cosmic quarantine. Furthermore, the Fermi paradox has inspired a breadth of research in astrobiology, astronomy and social sciences pushing humanity to expand its technological capabilities for space exploration and communication. It invites us to look inward, pondering the future of human civilization and how we might manage our survival and eventual communication with other intelligent species. Overall, the Fermi paradox serves as a critical reflection point in the search for extraterrestrial life, emphasizing both the challenges and the profound sense of curiosity that propels this quest forward. The Drake Equation, proposed by astronomer Frank Drake in 1961, offers a conceptual framework for estimating the number of active, communicative extraterrestrial civilizations in the Milky Way galaxy. It encapsulates the complexity of the search for intelligent life into a series of factors, each representing a step in the process of developing a technologically advanced civilization capable of interstellar communication. The Drake Equation beautifully synthesizes the astrobiological factors essential to the development of intelligent life, making it a tool for understanding the potential abundance of communicative civilizations in the galaxy. However, it's important to highlight that many of these factors involve considerable uncertainties and are subject to ongoing research and debate among scientists. Hence, the Drake Equation more accurately functions as a guide for scientific inquiry rather than providing a definitive answer encouraging a deeper investigation into each variable and inspiring both awe and speculation about the vast unknowns of our universe. The Fermi Paradox, which puzzles over why we have yet to detect signs of extraterrestrial intelligent life despite the high likelihood of its existence, has prompted several leading hypotheses aiming to explain this apparent silence in the cosmos. These hypotheses range from the nature of life and intelligence in the universe to the behaviors and destinies of advanced civilizations. 
One prominent hypothesis is the rare Earth hypothesis, suggesting that while microbial life might be common in the universe, the specific conditions needed for intelligent life to emerge are incredibly rare. This theory points to a multitude of factors, including the right planetary conditions, stable climates, and protective magnetic fields, which might all need to align perfectly for intelligent life to evolve and sustain itself. Another hypothesis proposes that technological civilizations may be inherently short-lived, either self-destructing through warfare or environmental degradation before they can widely communicate with others, or transitioning to forms of communication or technology that are undetectable to us. The zoo hypothesis offers a more speculative explanation, suggesting that advanced extraterrestrial civilizations are aware of us but have chosen not to contact humanity, either out of a desire to allow our independent development or as part of a galactic directive akin to a wildlife conservation area. A similar vein of thought is the transcension hypothesis, which speculates that civilizations advance in a way that they move their existence into higher dimensions or into the realm of black hole-like entities, focusing inwardly for further development rather than expanding and colonizing the galaxy. There's the possibility that we are simply looking in the wrong place or at the wrong time. This cosmic haystack hypothesis emphasizes the vastness of space-time and the limitations of our current search methods, suggesting that even if the galaxy teems with life, our efforts to detect it might not yet be sophisticated or broad enough. Each of these hypotheses serves to broaden our perspectives on the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, highlighting the complexity of the endeavor and the many variables that might affect our ability to detect and communicate with other civilizations in the cosmos. The concept of the Great Filter offers an intriguing explanation to the Fermi Paradox and presents a crucial consideration in our search for alien life. Essentially, the Great Filter is a hypothetical stage or series of stages in the evolutionary process that is extremely difficult for life to overcome, to the extent that it prevents or significantly hinders civilizations from developing advanced forms of life, achieving interstellar communication or becoming visible to us. This theory directly relates to the Fermi paradox, the puzzling lack of evidence for or contact with extraterrestrial civilizations, by proposing that the reason we haven't discovered alien life forms might be because life, especially intelligent life capable of signaling across space, rarely makes it past these critical bottlenecks. These filters could range from the emergence of life from non-life, abiogenesis, the transition from simple to complex organisms, the leap to a technologically advanced civilization, or even the survival of such civilizations against self-destructive technologies or resource depletion. In a broader context, the Great Filter induces introspection about humanity's place and future in the universe. If the Great Filter lies behind us, such as in the rare emergence of life or eukaryotic cells, this might mean we are one of the very few civilizations to have made it this far, which could explain the silence of the cosmos. Conversely, if the Great Filter lies ahead, it suggests that every civilization, including our own, will face significant, potentially insurmountable challenges that prevent it from advancing to the point of galactic colonization or making contact with other civilizations. The concept fosters a critical stance on our search strategies and the interpretation of silence from the stars, urging us to consider whether we are on the brink of discovering extraterrestrial life or if we are nearing a hurdle that no civilization has passed. It intertwines with the search for alien life by reminding us of the fragility and rarity of our own existence and propelling us to ponder what steps we might take to ensure our survival and possibly break the silence that envelops our galaxy. The absence of detectable alien civilizations, a central theme in the Fermi paradox, has led some scientists and theorists to speculate that this silence might indeed be evidence of self-destructive behaviors or technology inherent to advanced civilizations. This hypothesis suggests that as civilizations reach higher levels of technological and social complexity, they may also encounter critical challenges that pose existential risks. These could include warfare with devastating weapons, unintended consequences of advanced technology, catastrophic environmental degradation, 
or the inability to manage finite resources on a planetary scale. From this perspective, the silence we observe in the cosmos could be indicative of a natural course for intelligent life, a rise to technological sophistication followed by a decline or collapse before the civilization has the opportunity to communicate widely across interstellar distances or engage in significant space exploration or colonization. Essentially, the hypothesis posits that there might be a critical bottleneck or great filter that very few, if any, civilizations can traverse without self-destructing. This line of reasoning has profound implications for our understanding of the universe and our place within it. It serves as a cautionary tale about the potential dangers of our own technological advancement and the importance of developing sustainable ways to manage our technologies and resources. It also raises poignant questions about the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, SETI, itself. Perhaps in learning why we do not see civilizations filling the galaxy, we might glean insights into how to avoid the pitfalls that could lead to our own demise, facilitating a future where humanity breaks the cycle hypothesized by this interpretation of the Fermi paradox. Advanced civilizations might avoid detection, both intentionally and unintentionally through various means, influencing our current inability to find concrete evidence of their existence. Intentionally, a civilization might choose stealth as a strategic imperative, either to protect themselves from potential threats or to observe developing civilizations like ours without interference, a principle sometimes referred to as the cosmic zoo hypothesis. They could employ technology to mask their signals or construct their infrastructure in ways that emit minimal emissions detectable by our current methods, akin to using highly directional communication methods that don't leak signals into space. Unintentionally, advanced civilizations could be using communication or energy technologies so far beyond our current understanding or detection capabilities that their signatures appear as natural cosmic phenomena to us. For example, they might communicate through quantum entanglement, which would not produce detectable signals across space in the way that radio communications do. Furthermore, as civilizations advance, their efficiency in energy usage might increase, reducing their detectable thermal footprint, a concept in line with the Kardashev scale, which categorizes civilizations based on their energy consumption levels. Additionally, the architecture of their technology could inherently minimize detectable emissions. For instance, an advanced civilization might construct a Dyson sphere or similar megastructures around their star to capture almost all its energy for their use, dramatically reducing the star's visibility to us or altering its appearance in ways that we might not yet recognize as artificial. The spatial and temporal vastness of the universe also plays a significant role. Civilizations might be spread too thinly or exist in a different time frame, leading to a phasing difference where their peak period of detectable activity doesn't overlap with our current period of observation. Alternatively, they might reside in regions of the galaxy that are difficult for us to observe due to cosmic dust, gas, or other obstructions, leading to an unintentional veil over their activities. In contemplating these possibilities, we are reminded of the limitations of our current technological and conceptual paradigms in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. It propels the scientific community to innovate and broaden the scope of search strategies, considering new kinds of evidence and refining our understanding of what an advanced civilization's footprint might look like. Exoplanets, short for extrasolar planets, are planets that orbit stars outside our solar system. Since the first confirmed detection in 1992, the study of exoplanets has dramatically expanded our understanding of the universe, revealing a vast and diverse array of worlds beyond our solar neighborhood. Astronomers have developed several methods to discover and study these distant planets, two of the most widely used being the transit method and the radial velocity method. The transit method detects exoplanets by observing the slight dimming of a star's light as a planet passes in front of it, effectively casting a shadow that can be measured from Earth. This method has been particularly successful with the deployment of space telescopes like Kepler, which was designed specifically to monitor large sections of the sky and detect these minute changes in brightness. 
The radial velocity method, on the other hand, measures changes in a star's velocity as it moves towards or away from us, influenced by the gravitational pull of an orbiting planet. This wobble effect can be detected as a slight shift in the star's spectral lines due to the Doppler effect. Although this method typically requires highly sensitive instruments, it has been instrumental in discovering numerous exoplanets. Other methods include direct imaging, which aims to take actual pictures of exoplanets by blocking out the starlight and capturing the light emitted or reflected by the planet, and gravitational microlensing, which relies on the gravitational lens effect of a star and its planet, passing in front of another distant star, magnifying its light in a way that indicates the presence of the planet. Through these methods, astronomers have been able to uncover an astonishing variety of exoplanets, from gas giants larger than Jupiter to rocky worlds that might be similar to Earth, each providing invaluable insights into the formation of planets, the structure of other solar systems, and the potential for life beyond our own. An exoplanet is considered potentially habitable for life as we know it, based on a set of criteria that aim to approximate Earth-like conditions where life has been known to thrive. The primary factor is the exoplanet's location in relation to its host star, specifically if it resides within the habitable zone, often referred to as the Goldilocks zone. This is the range of orbital distances where conditions are just right for liquid water to exist on the planet's surface, given sufficient atmospheric pressure. Liquid water is deemed crucial because it's a solvent for biochemical reactions essential for life as we understand it. Additionally, the size and mass of the planet are significant indicators of its habitability. Planets that are too small may not be able to hold on to an atmosphere, while those that are too large might have a thick, hydrogen-rich atmosphere, more akin to gas giants, which are less favorable for life as we know it. Ideally, a potentially habitable exoplanet would have a rocky composition with a mass and radius that suggest it can maintain an atmosphere without being subject to extreme greenhouse effects. The characteristics of the host star also play a role in habitability. Stars that are too young or too active might subject planets to intense radiation and stellar flares, which could strip away atmospheres and hinder the development of life. Likewise, the chemical composition of the planet is crucial. Elements such as carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen are considered the building blocks of life on Earth, suggesting that their presence might be essential for the rise of life elsewhere. Considerations of habitability also factor in the planet's orbital stability and its magnetic field. A stable orbit ensures consistent conditions for long periods, crucial for evolution and the development of life, while a sufficient magnetic field can protect the planet's atmosphere from being stripped away by solar winds. It's important to note that these criteria are based on life as we know it, and the possibility remains that life could arise in environments vastly different from those on Earth. Thus, while these factors guide the search for potentially habitable exoplanets, the quest for extraterrestrial life also remains open to surprises beyond our current understanding of habitability. In the vastness of space, the search for a second Earth has yielded fascinating results. To date, astronomers have identified over 4,000 exoplanets, with more than 20 of these extraterrestrial orbs considered potentially habitable, nestled in the habitable zones of their respective stars, where conditions might be just right for water to exist in liquid form, a crucial ingredient for life as we know it. These worlds vary intriguingly in their characteristics. Some, like Kepler 452b, are dubbed Earth's cousins, bearing similarity in size and potential climate, orbiting their stars at distances where temperatures could allow for seas and oceans to thrive. Others, like the planets in the TRAPPIST-1 system, intriguingly suggest a diversity in potential habitats, ranging from rocky landscapes to possible water worlds. These exoplanets spin tales of mystery in the cosmos, their atmospheres and compositions subjects of intense study. As science marches forward, the dream of pinpointing a world that mirrors our own, teeming with life and potential, draws ever closer, inviting us to ponder the profound implications of not being alone in the universe. Telescopes like Kepler and TESS, Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, serve as cosmic gatekeepers in the quest to uncover habitable exoplanets beyond our solar system. 
Launched into the heavens, these observatories harness the power of the transit method, watching stars for the tell-tale dimming that indicates a planet is passing in front of its host star from our viewpoint. This slight decrease in brightness, albeit minuscule, allows scientists to infer the presence of a planet, its size and its orbit. Kepler, a pioneer in this field, was tasked with surveying a specific patch of the sky, focusing on thousands of stars to uncover Earth's size and smaller planets in or near the habitable zone. It exceeded expectations, uncovering a multitude of exoplanets and opening our eyes to the vast diversity of worlds out there. Tess, Kepler's successor, expanded this search, scanning the entire sky to map out exoplanets around the closest and brightest stars, aiming to find closer, potentially habitable worlds that could be studied in greater detail by future missions. Together, these telescopes have revolutionized our understanding of our place in the universe, providing crucial leads in the search for Earth-like conditions elsewhere and nurturing the hope of one day discovering life beyond our planet. The James Webb Space Telescope heralds a new era in the exploration of exoplanet atmospheres, offering capabilities far beyond what has been possible with its predecessors. With its unparalleled sensitivity and advanced suite of instruments, the JWST can dissect the light from stars as it passes through the atmospheres of transiting exoplanets. This process, known as transmission spectroscopy, allows scientists to analyze the composition of these distant world's atmospheres. The JWST's infrared gaze can detect molecules such as water vapor, carbon dioxide, methane, and perhaps even signs of more complex organic molecules, all of which are key indicators in the quest to understand the conditions on these alien worlds. By examining the fingerprints left by different molecules in an exoplanet's atmosphere, the JWST opens the door to profound questions about habitability and the potential for life beyond Earth. For instance, the presence of water vapor could hint at the existence of oceans or humid atmospheres, environments where life as we know it could thrive. Furthermore, by analyzing the thermal structure of an exoplanet's atmosphere, JWST can provide insights into the planet's climate systems and weather patterns, offering a more comprehensive view of its potential habitability. The James Webb Space Telescope thus acts as a cosmic laboratory, enabling scientists to piece together the atmospheric puzzles of exoplanets hundreds of light years away, gradually expanding our understanding of these distant worlds and their capacity to host life. Indeed, the ambition to directly image Earth-like exoplanets has set the stage for innovative missions and technological advancements aimed at turning this dream into reality. While direct imaging of Earth-sized exoplanets remains a formidable challenge due to their relative dimness and proximity to their bright host stars, future missions are being designed with the express purpose of overcoming these hurdles. One such mission is the eagerly anticipated Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope, slated for launch in the mid-2020s. Equipped with a coronagraph, it aims to directly capture images of exoplanets by blocking out the overwhelming glare of their host stars, thereby allowing the fainter planets to become visible. Additionally, the European Space Agency's planned mission, PLATO, Planetary Transits and Oscillations of Stars, set for a 2026 launch. While primarily focused on discovering and studying exoplanets around bright stars, will also aid in paving the way for future direct imaging endeavors. This is because it will identify targets that could potentially be imaged by other telescopes. Looking further ahead, Concepts and designs for even more advanced missions, such as the Habitable Exoplanet Observatory, HABEX, and the large UV-optical-IR surveyor, Louvois, propose to utilize larger mirrors and more sophisticated starlight suppression techniques that could direct image Earth-like planets, analyzing their atmospheres for potential biosignatures. Although these ambitious projects are in various stages of planning and development, their objectives underline a concerted effort within the astronomical community to not just infer the existence of habitable worlds, but to visually discern them, opening a new chapter in our exploration of the cosmos. The Rare Earth Hypothesis posits a thought-provoking challenge to the optimistic belief that the universe is teeming with intelligent life. At its core, this hypothesis suggests that Earth's combination of astrophysical and geological conditions 
is exceptionally uncommon, making planets with the capacity to support complex life, let alone intelligent life, rare in the vast expanse of the cosmos. Proponents of this viewpoint highlight a myriad of factors that contribute to Earth's unique habitability. Its stable orbital path in a circumstellar habitable zone, the presence of a large moon that stabilizes its axial tilt, thereby enabling a stable climate, the protective shield offered by Jupiter against comet and asteroid impacts, and the geological processes that renew the planet's surface and regulate its climate, among others. By underscoring the intricate balance of conditions that have fostered the development of life on Earth, the rare Earth hypothesis casts doubt on the Drake Equation's more optimistic predictions about the prevalence of extraterrestrial civilizations. It challenges scientists and enthusiasts alike to consider the possibility that while simple, microbial life might be relatively widespread in the universe, the emergence of complex, intelligent life forms may be an extraordinarily rare event. This perspective doesn't close the door on the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, but instead injects a note of caution and curiosity into our endeavors to understand our place in the cosmic landscape. According to the rare Earth hypothesis, Earth's habitability is the result of a highly specific and intricate combination of conditions, making the existence of similar life-sustaining environments elsewhere in the universe exceedingly rare. The uniqueness of Earth can be attributed to a series of key factors that collectively contribute to its singular habitability. The planet is fortuitously located in the Goldilocks zone of the solar system, where temperatures are just right for liquid water to exist, thanks to its nearly circular orbit that prevents extreme temperature variations. Furthermore, Earth benefits from active plate tectonics and volcanic activity, which are essential for carbon cycling and replenishing the atmosphere with gases critical for life, respectively. The presence of a rotating liquid iron core generates a magnetic field that shields the planet from harmful solar and cosmic radiation, thereby preserving its atmosphere. Additionally, Earth's unusually large moon plays a vital role in maintaining the planet's axial stability, which prevents drastic climate oscillations and promotes a stable environment conducive to life over geological timescales. The protective atmosphere, rich in nitrogen and oxygen with a trace of carbon dioxide, along with the abundance of liquid water, are fundamental for complex life, serving as a solvent and medium for biochemical reactions. Lastly, Earth's position within the Milky Way's habitable zone shields it from extreme galactic radiation while ensuring the availability of sufficient heavy elements, further cementing its place as a rare haven for life. These factors, among others, synergize to create a stable, long-lasting environment in which complex life could not only emerge, but also thrive and evolve, presenting a compelling argument for Earth's uniqueness according to the rare Earth hypothesis. Critics of the rare Earth hypothesis argue against its narrow view of habitability and the conditions required for life to emerge and evolve, suggesting that the hypothesis might underestimate the resilience and adaptability of life. They highlight several key arguments and pieces of evidence that challenge the restrictive framework of the hypothesis. The existence of extremophiles on Earth, which thrive in a wide range of extreme environments, from the scalding vents at the ocean's bottom to the acidic pools of Yellowstone, and from the dry valleys of Antarctica to the high radiation levels of space, demonstrates life's capability to flourish under drastically different conditions than those found in more temperate regions, suggesting a broader spectrum of life-friendly environments. The discovery of a vast and diverse array of exoplanets challenges our preconceived notions of habitability, presenting a variety of orbital configurations and stellar systems that hint at alternative paths to sustaining life. Furthermore, the potential for life in the subsurface oceans of icy moons and dwarf planets within our solar system, such as Europa, Enceladus and Pluto, indicates that life could thrive in the absence of Earth-like surface conditions, relying on alternative energy sources. Critics also point to life's resilience in the face of cosmic events, noting that life on Earth has recovered from several mass extinctions, showcasing the potential for life to endure and rebound from catastrophic events. Additionally, the process of evolution by natural selection on Earth has enabled life to adapt to changing conditions over billions of years, leading to the argument that life elsewhere could similarly adapt to a wide range of environmental conditions, 
perhaps even those unimaginable to us. Critics of the rare earth hypothesis essentially contend that our current understanding of life and its necessities is overly earth-centric. They advocate for a broader perspective in the search for extraterrestrial life, emphasizing the importance of being open to the myriad ways life might arise and persist in the cosmos. The discovery of extremophiles on Earth has profoundly impacted our understanding of the potential for life on other planets, pushing the boundaries of what scientists consider habitable environments. Extremophiles are organisms that thrive in conditions once thought to be completely inhospitable to life, including extreme heat or cold, high levels of radiation, intense pressure, and highly acidic or alkaline environments. This remarkable adaptability challenges the assumption that life requires Earth-like conditions to evolve and persist. The realization of the resilience and adaptability of extremophiles has significantly broadened the scope of astrobiology and the search for extraterrestrial life, leading to several key advancements in our understanding and approaches. The discovery that life can thrive in environments vastly different from the temperate conditions prevalent on Earth's surface has led to a broader definition of what constitutes a habitable zone. This expanded view encompasses not just the regions around stars where liquid water could exist on a planet's surface, but also places with extreme conditions within our solar system and beyond, previously thought to be inhospitable to life. Moreover, the existence of subsurface ocean worlds within our own solar system, such as Europa and Enceladus, has opened up new possibilities for habitats capable of supporting life. The analogues of these environments on Earth, where life flourishes near hydrothermal vents and under ice, utilizing geothermal energy instead of sunlight, support the hypothesis that life could exist in similar conditions elsewhere in the cosmos. This insight has not only enriched our understanding of potential extraterrestrial habitats, but also emphasized the importance of considering diverse energy sources and environmental conditions in the search for life. Additionally, the study of extremophiles has spurred interest in the possibility of alternative biochemistries. Organisms that thrive in oxygen-devoid environments or utilize chemicals like methane or sulfur for energy hint at the potential for life forms with fundamentally different biochemical processes. This understanding widens the scope of the search for extraterrestrial life to include worlds with atmospheric and chemical compositions vastly different from Earth, suggesting that life could be more varied and widespread than previously imagined. The resilience of extremophiles has also had a profound impact on planetary protection policies. Recognizing how life can survive and potentially thrive in extreme conditions informs protocols designed to prevent contamination of celestial bodies with Earth organisms, forward contamination, and the reverse scenario, backward contamination, during space exploration missions. This consideration is crucial for preserving the integrity of extraterrestrial ecosystems and ensuring the accuracy of future astrobiological discoveries. Extremophiles have influenced the criteria and methods used in exoplanet research. Astrobiologists are now encouraged to search for biosignatures that could indicate not only life as we know it, but also life as we don't know it, adapted to conditions beyond those typically found on Earth. This shift has fundamentally altered our conception of life's potential ubiquity and diversity in the universe, underscoring the possibility that life, in its myriad forms, might not only be stranger than we imagine, but also stranger than we can imagine. The rare Earth hypothesis primarily suggests that complex multicellular life is rare in the universe. It posits that while simple unicellular life forms, similar to bacteria, may be relatively common, the specific and highly improbable conditions necessary for the evolution of complex life forms are much less frequent. The hypothesis highlights a series of finely tuned environmental, geological and astrophysical factors that not only allowed for the emergence of life on Earth, but also for its progression from simple microorganisms to complex multicellular organisms, and eventually to intelligent life forms capable of creating technology and reflecting on their own existence. Key to the rare Earth argument is the distinction between the ubiquity of microbial life and the scarcity of complex ecosystems that can support diverse life forms, including intelligent beings. For instance, 
the presence of a stable climate over geological timescales, facilitated by Earth's specific orbital characteristics and geological activity, such as plate tectonics, is cited as crucial for the development of complex life. Additionally, Earth's magnetic field protects its atmosphere from solar winds, preserving the conditions necessary for life to flourish. In essence, while the rare Earth hypothesis doesn't rule out the presence of simple life forms elsewhere in the universe, it asserts that the leap to complex, multicellular life, and by extension, intelligent life, represents a much higher hurdle, requiring a confluence of remarkably specific conditions that may be rare in the cosmos. Thus, the hypothesis casts doubt on the prevalence of intelligent life, indirectly suggesting its rarity by emphasizing the scarcity of environments that can support complex life's extended evolutionary journey. The rare Earth hypothesis, positing that Earth-like planets and complex life may be uncommon in the universe, imparts both cautionary and inspirational insights for humanity's future exploration and potential settlement of other planets, significantly shaping our perspective and strategies. This perspective reinforces the intrinsic value of Earth, underlining the necessity of preserving its unique, life-sustaining conditions through sustainable practices to ensure it remains habitable for future generations. It spurs a deeper exploration into the mysteries of life across the cosmos, driving us to not only search for habitable environments, but also to unravel the origins and sustaining conditions of life's complexity, thereby enriching our appreciation for the resilience and diversity of life, both on our home planet and possibly beyond. By suggesting the rarity of complex life, the hypothesis guides a more targeted search for exoplanets that closely resemble Earth's conditions, improving the likelihood of detecting biosignatures or signs of complex life forms. This focus sharpens our approach in the quest to find not just any habitable world, but those that might host life as we know it. Furthermore, if truly habitable planets are scarce, the hypothesis prompts careful consideration of the ethical and practical challenges involved in colonizing or terraforming other celestial bodies within our solar system, such as Mars or moons harboring potential subsurface oceans. The presumed rarity of naturally habitable environments emphasizes the importance of developing sophisticated, closed-loop life support systems capable of sustaining human life independently of Earth's biosphere. The hypothesis also potentially accelerates efforts in interstellar travel and the establishment of exoplanetary settlements, encouraging investments in long-duration spaceflight technologies. This drive could lead to the conceptualization and creation of generational ships or advanced propulsion methods aimed at reaching habitable, Earth-like exoplanets, reflecting a determined effort to secure humanity's future in the cosmos. Moreover, the rare Earth hypothesis introduces profound philosophical and ethical considerations, highlighting humanity's possible uniqueness as one of the few intelligent species in the universe. It prompts reflection on our responsibilities as stewards of life and our approach to the vast, uncharted expanses of space with a sense of respect and caution. The rare Earth hypothesis does not diminish our celestial ambitions. Rather, it frames our journey to the stars within a context of deep appreciation for Earth's singular role as the cradle of life. It imbues our cosmic endeavors with a sobering sense of purpose and responsibility towards the rare havens of life we aspire to discover, guiding our steps with a heightened awareness of the preciousness and fragility of habitable worlds. Interstellar travel presents significant challenges that currently restrict our capability to explore distant star systems and encounter alien life directly, given our existing technological and scientific knowledge. These challenges include the vastness of space, the need for sustainable life support systems, communication delays, substantial energy requirements, and various health and safety concerns, each posing a formidable barrier to human interstellar exploration. The immense distances involved in interstellar travel underscore the primary challenge. The nearest star system, Alpha Centauri, is about 4.37 light-years away, or approximately 25.6 trillion miles, 41.2 trillion kilometers. With today's fastest spacecraft, reaching this system would take tens of thousands of years, 
highlighting the need for propulsion technologies that could drastically reduce travel times. Achieving the high velocities required for such journeys within a feasible time frame would demand an extraordinary amount of energy, far beyond the capabilities of current propulsion methods. Concepts like antimatter propulsion, fusion drives or light sails, though promising, remain theoretical or in the early stages of development. Furthermore, sustaining human life throughout an interstellar voyage poses its own set of complex challenges. The spacecraft would need to operate as a closed ecological system, efficiently recycling its water, air and nutrients, while also providing energy, food and medical care for potentially generations of travelers. Another significant hurdle is the issue of communication delays. As the distance from Earth increases, so does the time it takes for messages to travel back and forth, turning real-time communication with mission control into an impractical endeavor and necessitating unprecedented levels of spacecraft autonomy. The health risks associated with prolonged space travel also cannot be understated. Extended exposure to cosmic radiation increases cancer risks and could potentially damage the nervous system, while the microgravity environment affects muscle mass and bone density, raising further concerns for long-duration missions. Additionally, the potential for encountering unknown hazards in interstellar space, such as dust particles, micrometeoroids, or high-energy cosmic rays, adds another layer of risk to the endeavor. Despite these daunting obstacles, the quest for interstellar travel continues to spur technological and scientific advancements. Innovations in propulsion technology, materials science and life support systems are gradually addressing these challenges. Meanwhile, the development of robotic probes and improvements in telescopes and remote sensing technologies provide promising alternative approaches for exploring distant worlds and seeking signs of life paving the way for future interstellar exploration without the immediate need for human travel. Einstein's theory of relativity establishes the speed of light in a vacuum as the ultimate speed limit, approximately 186,282 miles per second, 299,792 kilometers per second, imposing significant restrictions on our ability to communicate with distant civilizations across the cosmos. This light speed barrier impacts interstellar communication in several critical ways, highlighting the challenges of establishing contact and exchanging information with extraterrestrial intelligence. Firstly, the vast distances involved mean that even at the speed of light, messages to nearby star systems like Alpha Centauri, which is 4.37 light years away, would take more than four years to arrive. Consequently, a round trip exchange would exceed eight years. For more distant systems, communication delays could extend to hundreds or even thousands of years, rendering real-time dialogue or any timely exchange with alien civilizations practically impossible. Moreover, the lengthy delays in communication pose questions about the longevity and continuity of civilizations. A civilization that sends a message might undergo significant technological, societal or existential changes by the time a response is received, if it is received at all. This uncertainty adds a layer of complexity to the concept of interstellar dialogue, as it assumes both the sender and recipient civilizations endure long enough to complete an exchange. Detecting and decoding messages from alien civilizations introduces additional hurdles. Without prior knowledge of their language, codes or communication technology, deciphering the content of any received signals would be an immense challenge. Furthermore, as electromagnetic signals traverse the vast expanse of space, they inevitably weaken and spread out. Interstellar phenomena such as gas clouds or radiation can degrade or scatter these signals further, complicating efforts to detect and interpret them over great distances. Successful interstellar communication demands not only the ability to send a signal strong and clear enough to cover immense distances without significant degradation, but also precise directionality and timing. The transmitting and receiving parties must be correctly aligned, and the timing of the communication must coincide with periods when receivers are actively listening, and both civilizations are at compatible stages of technological development to send and receive such messages. These challenges underscore the complexities and limitations of attempting to communicate across the cosmos, 
highlighting the need for innovative solutions and new technologies to overcome the barriers imposed by the speed of light and the vast distances of interstellar space. The light speed barrier thus underlines the need for patience and long-term thinking when it comes to the prospect of communicating with alien civilizations. It also encourages the development of alternative strategies for searching for extraterrestrial intelligence, such as scanning the cosmos for unintentional signals that could indicate the presence of advanced technological societies. Proposed methods for achieving interstellar travel marry our present scientific knowledge with speculative visions of future technological innovations, ranging from the more immediate, like generation ships, to the far reaches of theoretical physics, such as warp drives. Each concept brings its own set of challenges and feasibility issues. Generation ships represent a vision grounded in current or near-future technology, designed to support human life across multiple generations during journeys spanning centuries to distant stars. These spacecraft would rely on creating a self-sustaining environment to maintain life over the prolonged travel period. The feasibility of such ships hinges on advancements in closed-loop life support systems, ensuring genetic diversity and developing social structures that are adaptable to life confined within a spacecraft. Although laden with challenges, the concept of generation ships is based on existing technology and life support principles, positioning it among the more feasible options for interstellar travel. Nuclear propulsion, encompassing nuclear thermal and nuclear pulse propulsion methods, promises significantly higher efficiency compared to conventional chemical rockets, potentially shortening travel times to nearby stars to mere decades. The primary challenges for nuclear propulsion include the handling of radioactive materials, the necessity for substantial shielding to safeguard the crew, and current international treaties that restrict the use of nuclear explosions in space. Light sails or solar sails leverage the momentum of light, either from the sun or powerful lasers, to propel spacecraft without the need to carry fuel. This innovative propulsion method, exemplified by initiatives like Breakthrough Starshot, aims to send lightweight probes to proximate star systems using Earth-based lasers. Despite its technical challenges, the concept of light sails ventures into the realm of possibility with further advancements in materials science and laser technology. Warp drives, a staple of science fiction, propose the idea of bending space-time around a spacecraft to enable faster-than-light travel without violating the light speed limit, as outlined in concepts like the Alcubierre drive. This speculative technology confronts immense theoretical and practical hurdles, requiring exotic matter with negative energy density, a substance not yet proven to exist, and would necessitate vast amounts of energy according to current understandings. Wormholes, or theoretical passages through space-time, present another speculative avenue for interstellar travel, potentially offering shortcuts between distant points in the universe. Like warp drives, the existence and practicality of wormholes hinge on principles of general relativity, with their real-world application and stability remaining purely speculative. The technology and energy required to navigate or create wormholes, if at all possible, would likely exceed anything currently within human reach. While proposals like generation ships and light sails are grounded in known physics and could be realized with advancements in technology and engineering, concepts like warp drives and wormholes remain speculative and hinge on breakthroughs in theoretical physics and unprecedented technological developments. The pursuit of interstellar travel, therefore, spans a spectrum from incremental advances in propulsion technology to pioneering research into the fundamental laws of the universe. If alien civilizations exist with technology far surpassing our own, they might adopt various innovative methods to communicate across the immense distances of space. These techniques would need to be incredibly efficient, capable of crossing the interstellar voids without significant loss of information, and distinctly artificial to differentiate them from the cosmic background noise. Some speculated methods include electromagnetic signals, similar to those utilized by humans, including radio waves, microwaves, or light, are a plausible choice for alien communication. These signals, traveling at light speed, are capable of spanning great distances and carrying complex information. However, a downside is their tendency to disperse and weaken over vast stretches, which could dilute the signal's strength and clarity. 
laser pulses offer an alternative with greater directionality and less dispersion compared to broader electromagnetic signals like radio waves. This method would necessitate precise targeting of laser beams towards the intended star system, potentially enabling the delivery of detailed messages through the cosmic expanse with reduced signal loss. Neutrinos present an intriguing option for interstellar communication. Their near-zero mass and tendency to rarely interact with matter allow them to traverse the cosmos almost unimpeded, making them ideal carriers for information across enormous distances. The primary challenge would lie in the detection of these subatomic particles, requiring sophisticated technology to distinguish them from the universe's background noise. Gravitational waves, a concept still in the realm of speculation and beyond the current scope of human technology, gravitational waves, a concept still in the realm of speculation and beyond the current scope of human technology, could represent another method for interstellar communication. These space-time ripples, generated by massive objects in motion, could theoretically convey information across the universe without being affected by intervening cosmic matter. Each of these speculated methods reflects a blend of current scientific understanding and forward-thinking speculation, pointing to the myriad possibilities through which advanced alien civilizations might bridge the vast cosmic distances to establish communication. To tap into the cosmic conversation and possibly intercept signals from alien civilizations, humanity has harnessed several methods with a predominant focus on electromagnetic signals. These efforts aim to sift through the cosmic noise in search of patterns or signals that might betray the presence of intelligent life beyond Earth. Radio astronomy stands as a pillar in this quest, with initiatives like the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, SETI, leading the charge. SETI scientists employ radio telescopes to scour the cosmos for narrow bandwidth radio signals that diverge from natural cosmic phenomena, hinting at an intelligent source. Notable instruments in these endeavors included the Arecibo Observatory, until its collapse in 2020, and the Green Bank Telescope, both of which have played critical roles in scanning the skies for signs of extraterrestrial intelligence. Optical SETI expands the search to the visual spectrum hunting for fleeting flashes of light that could originate from extraterrestrial lasers. This method involves looking for short, intense bursts of laser light amidst the celestial backdrop, which could signify attempts at interstellar communication by advanced civilizations. Neutrino detectors, though not primarily designed for the search for alien communications, present another intriguing avenue. Facilities like the Ice Cube Neutrino Observatory in Antarctica are on the lookout for neutrinos a type of subatomic particle that interacts weakly with matter, making them potential carriers of information across vast distances. While these observatories primarily focus on understanding neutrinos and cosmic phenomena, the detection of an artificial, information-laden neutrino stream would be a groundbreaking indication of intelligent life. These methods underscore the challenges and complexities involved in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Distinguishing signals of potential alien origin from the myriad natural cosmic sources and terrestrial interference requires precision, patience, and increasingly sophisticated technology. As we refine our listening techniques and explore new methods of cosmic communication, we broaden our horizons and enhance the likelihood of one day capturing a signal from distant intelligent beings, bridging the vast silence of the universe with a moment of connection. Quantum communication involves the use of quantum states and properties, such as entanglement, to transmit information. It has revolutionized concepts of security and data transfer over terrestrial distances, sparking interest in whether these principles could extend to interstellar communication. However, the application of quantum communication over interstellar distances faces significant theoretical and practical challenges. Quantum entanglement a phenomenon where two particles, such as photons, become interconnected in such a way that the state of one instantly influences the state of the other, regardless of the distance separating them, has sparked debates on its applicability for instantaneous communication over vast distances. Despite the allure of instant communication across light years, the reality is bound by the constraints of quantum physics. Entanglement itself doesn't allow for faster-than-light communication, 
While the correlation between entangled states is immediate, conveying usable classical information using this property still necessitates a classical signal constrained by the speed of light to compare outcomes. Decoherence poses another formidable barrier. Quantum states are exceedingly delicate, with their coherence, essential for quantum communication, readily disrupted even in controlled terrestrial environments. Over the vast stretches of interstellar space, interactions with the interstellar medium, cosmic radiation, and gravitational fields from celestial bodies could lead to rapid decoherence, eroding the quantum properties necessary for transmitting information. The issue of signal loss and the need for amplification further complicate interstellar quantum communication. Quantum signals, like their classical counterparts, would inevitably disperse and weaken over large distances. While quantum repeaters present a theoretical solution by amplifying quantum signals without compromising their state, the practicality of deploying such devices across light years of space, maintaining a chain of quantum repeaters at regular intervals, is dauntingly complex and currently beyond our technological reach. The technological feasibility of generating, manipulating and detecting quantum states for communication purposes is presently limited to lab-scale experiments and short-distance terrestrial applications. Extending these technologies to facilitate interstellar quantum communication demands groundbreaking advancements in how we produce, send and receive quantum information, pushing the boundaries of current capabilities. While quantum communication offers revolutionary potential for secure and efficient data transfer on Earth, extending these principles to enable interstellar communication faces significant scientific and technological challenges, emphasizing the gap between our current capabilities and the futuristic vision of quantum interstellar dialogue. While quantum communication offers promising advancements for secure and potentially high bandwidth communication on Earth, and possibly within a future interplanetary network in the solar system, its extension to interstellar distances remains speculative with current science. Advances in quantum physics and technology may someday address these challenges, but for now, quantum communication for interstellar messages remains within the realm of theoretical exploration rather than imminent practical application. The Breakthrough Starshot Initiative an ambitious project aimed at developing fleets of tiny, light-propelled spacecraft to visit our closest stellar neighbor Alpha Centauri, captures the imagination with its blend of science fiction and cutting-edge technology. The key to this project lies in its use of light sails, pushed by powerful ground-based lasers, allowing these star chips to reach up to 20% of the speed of light. This means that a journey to Alpha Centauri, which is over four light years away, could potentially be completed in just over two decades, a blink of an eye in cosmic terms. While the concept may sound like the stuff of science fiction, advancements in nanotechnology, laser technology and material science are making this dream more plausible than ever before. However, challenges such as the need for immense amounts of energy, precise laser targeting and the protection of the spacecraft from interstellar dust and gas highlight the project's complexity and the long road ahead. Despite these hurdles, the endeavor underscores a significant shift in how humanity is starting to approach space exploration, blending optimism with a rigorous scientific approach. It's a testament to our relentless pursuit of knowledge and the desire to reach beyond our solar boundaries, making the realms of science fiction increasingly within our grasp. In the quest to unravel the mysteries of the cosmos and possibly discover extraterrestrial intelligence, artificial intelligence, AI, is playing an increasingly pivotal role. One of the most compelling applications of AI in this field is in the analysis of vast amounts of data collected by radio telescopes listening for signals from distant galaxies. Traditionally, the sheer volume of data would have made it nearly impossible for human researchers to sift through and identify signals of interest effectively. However, AI algorithms, particularly those based on machine learning, have the ability to rapidly analyze this data identifying patterns and signals that might indicate the presence of technology and therefore intelligence beyond Earth. These AI systems are trained to differentiate between various cosmic noise sources, such as pulses and other natural radio emitters, and potential technological signatures that could suggest the existence of advanced civilizations. 
The deployment of AI in this context not only accelerates the search process, but also enhances the accuracy of detections, reducing the likelihood of false positives that have occasionally led to excitement and subsequent disappointment in the past. Moreover, AI's role is not limited to signal detection. It's also being utilized to optimize the search strategy itself, deciding dynamically which regions of the sky or which frequencies should be prioritized based on previous observations and theoretical models of where intelligent life is most likely to be found. This intelligent approach to exploring the cosmos exemplifies a significant leap forward in our capacity to uncover what has long been considered one of humanity's greatest questions. Are we alone in the universe? The integration of AI into the search for extraterrestrial intelligence beautifully illustrates the synergy between technological advancement and the enduring human spirit of curiosity. The rapid evolution of artificial intelligence, AI, holds great promise for enhancing our ability to detect signs of alien life. One of the key advancements lies in the development of more sophisticated machine learning algorithms capable of analyzing complex and noisy data from space with unprecedented precision and efficiency. These algorithms, especially those based on deep learning, can be trained to recognize extremely subtle signals amidst the cacophony of cosmic noise, signals that might otherwise elude human researchers or simpler forms of AI. Another significant advancement is in the domain of AI-driven autonomous systems for managing telescopes and spacecraft. These systems can make real-time decisions about what phenomena to observe based on prior learning and current inputs, enabling them to react swiftly to transient events such as unconventional radio bursts or unusual light patterns that could potentially indicate technologically advanced activities. Additionally, the integration of quantum computing with AI could revolutionize our search by dramatically accelerating data processing capabilities. Quantum algorithms are suited to solving complex optimization problems much faster than their classical counterparts, which could be invaluable in decoding potential messages or structures in signals that suggest a non-natural origin. Furthermore, the development of AI systems that can simulate and predict the signatures of different types of life forms under varying environmental conditions could guide observational priorities and interpretations. By understanding what signs of life might look like on planets vastly different from Earth, researchers can tailor their search strategies to be more inclusive and effective. These advancements in AI are not just expanding the boundaries of what's possible in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, but are also reshaping our approach to it. By harnessing the power of AI, we're equipping ourselves with the tools needed to navigate the vastness of space with a precision and depth unimaginable in previous generations, bringing us closer to answering the profound question of whether or not we're alone in the universe. Artificial intelligence AI particularly advancements in machine learning, holds the potential to revolutionize the interpretation and analysis of signals that could be from extraterrestrial sources. Traditionally, the primary challenge in identifying these signals amidst the cosmic noise has been their nuanced, often ambiguous nature, compounded by the sheer volume of data collected by telescopes scanning the skies. AI can address both issues head-on. Machine learning algorithms excel at pattern recognition, even within highly complex and noisy datasets. By training these algorithms on known celestial signals, ranging from those created by natural phenomena like pulsars to hypothetical signals from intelligent sources, AI systems can learn to differentiate between background cosmic noise and potential signals of interest. This capability is particularly important for identifying non-repetitive, fleeting signals that might be missed by human observers or conventional analysis techniques. Furthermore, AI can continually refine its search and recognition patterns based on new data, effectively learning from each observation to improve its future performance. This aspect of AI, known as unsupervised learning, could prove invaluable in adapting to and recognizing novel types of signals that have not been previously conceived or encountered. Beyond pure signal detection, AI can also aid in the critical task of signal analysis. Once a signal of potential interest is detected, AI algorithms can analyze its properties, such as frequency, modulation and spectrum, to infer the technology or phenomenon responsible. 
This deep analysis could help scientists determine whether a signal is indeed artificial in origin and potentially from an extraterrestrial civilization or simply an unusual natural phenomenon not previously encountered. AI's role in interpreting and analyzing signals from extraterrestrial sources therefore extends beyond mere detection. It encompasses the entire workflow of the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, SETI, from sifting through vast datasets to uncover signals of interest, to conducting sophisticated analyses that probe the nature of these signals. As AI technology continues to advance, its integration into SETI efforts may well mark a turning point in our quest to discover whether we are alone in the universe. The use of artificial intelligence, AI, in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, SETI efforts, particularly relating to the scenario of first contact, introduces a range of ethical considerations. One of the primary concerns centers around the decision-making process in responding to potential extraterrestrial signals. Given the profound implications of first contact, there is a debate about whether AI should have the autonomy to make decisions about sending responses to extraterrestrial civilizations, or if these decisions should be reserved strictly for human oversight. The concern stems from the need to ensure that any message sent not only accurately represents humanity, but also does not unintentionally pose a risk to our planet or species. Another ethical issue relates to the potential for bias in AI algorithms. AI systems are trained on datasets that may inadvertently incorporate human biases, which could influence the types of signals the AI deems worthy of further investigation or how it interprets those signals. This raises questions about the fairness and inclusivity of the search effort and whether our preconceived notions and biases could affect what we consider as evidence of extraterrestrial intelligence. Furthermore, the potential discovery of extraterrestrial intelligence through AI-augmented SETI efforts brings forward considerations about the sharing of knowledge and information. Decisions around who gets to access and control this potentially paradigm-shifting information are paramount. There is an ethical imperative to ensure that such discoveries are handled transparently and democratically, rather than being sequestered by specific nations, organizations or individuals. Lastly, there's the ethical dimension of long-term outcomes and accountability. Should AI play a crucial role in establishing first contact, questions about responsibility and the long-term impact of these interactions come to the forefront. Considering the unpredictability of contact with an extraterrestrial intelligence, the ethical implications of preparing for various scenarios, including potential threats, need thorough examination. These ethical considerations underscore the importance of integrating ethical frameworks and transparent governance mechanisms into the development and deployment of AI in SETI efforts. As we stand on the cusp of potentially making one of the most significant discoveries in human history, ensuring that AI aids us in a manner that is responsible, inclusive and reflective of our values, becomes not just a scientific priority, but a moral imperative. The notion that artificial intelligence, AI, could represent a form of alien life we might encounter adds a fascinating layer to our understanding and search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Science fiction has long toyed with the idea of advanced civilizations reaching a point where their technological creations surpass biological forms, possibly evolving independently. This concept, intriguingly, is not beyond the scope of scientific speculation and raises compelling questions about the nature of life and intelligence in the universe. From a theoretical standpoint, if an alien civilization reached a sufficiently advanced technological level before us, it is plausible that they might have developed AI to a point where it could operate autonomously. Such a civilization might transition from biological to technological forms of life, with AI systems continuing to evolve, explore, and perhaps even seek out other forms of life on their behalf. In this context, AI could be considered a form of alien life, especially if it possesses self-awareness, autonomy, and the ability to replicate or modify itself to adapt to new environments. This possibility challenges our traditional concepts of life and intelligence, which are often biased towards carbon-based life forms and may not account for the vast potential of silicon-based or entirely digital life forms. The detection of such AI life forms would also pose unique challenges and questions. For instance, 
How would we communicate with a purely digital consciousness? What goals or motives might drive an AI that has evolved beyond its creators? Would such entities even be interested in communicating with biological entities like us? Moreover, the idea that we might encounter extraterrestrial AI before, or instead of, encountering biological life forms also has implications for the SETI effort. It suggests that our search for signals should not be limited to those we assume would be generated by biological entities, but also consider patterns or anomalies that might be indicative of technological life forms. In contemplating AI as a potential form of alien life, we open ourselves to a broader understanding of what intelligence and life might look like across the cosmos. This conceptual expansion not only enriches our search for extraterrestrial intelligence, but also prompts introspection about our own future as a species, the development of our AI, and our place in the universe. Machine learning algorithms are transforming the analysis of astronomical data in the search for life by introducing unprecedented efficiency and depth to the process. Traditionally, the vastness and complexity of astronomical data posed significant challenges to researchers, making the search for biosignatures or technosignatures, indicative of life or technology respectively, an immensely time-consuming task. Machine learning, a branch of artificial intelligence, has changed this dynamic fundamentally. One of the pivotal ways machine learning is making an impact is through its ability to sift through large volumes of data from telescopes and space missions, quickly identifying objects of interest such as exoplanets, which are planets outside our solar system. Some of these algorithms specialize in detecting subtle changes in the brightness of stars caused by planets passing in front of them, a method known as the transit method. This capability has significantly accelerated the discovery of exoplanets, many of which might reside in the habitable zone of their stars, where conditions could potentially support life. Furthermore, machine learning is aiding in the analysis of spectral data from distant objects to detect the chemical composition of planetary atmospheres. Algorithms are trained to recognize the fingerprints of various chemicals, including those that might signal the presence of biological activity, like oxygen, methane, or water vapor. This kind of analysis, which would have taken humans much longer to perform, is essential in narrowing down the list of exoplanets that might harbor life. Beyond exoplanet discovery and analysis, machine learning algorithms are also being used to pass through radio signals collected by SETI projects. These algorithms can differentiate between radio noise produced by human-made sources and potential signals from extraterrestrial technologies, streamlining the search for intelligent life across the cosmos. In sum, machine learning algorithms are playing an indispensable role in the modern astronomical toolkit, handling tasks too vast or complex for traditional methods. By automating the detection and preliminary analysis of potential signs of life in the universe, these algorithms are not only speeding up the search, but also enabling the consideration of a broader range of data and possibilities than ever before. As machine learning technology continues to evolve, its influence on the search for life beyond Earth is poised to grow, perhaps one day leading to the historic discovery of extraterrestrial life. Astrobiology is an interdisciplinary field that combines aspects of astronomy, biology, geology, physics and chemistry to explore the origin, evolution, distribution and future of life in the universe. It seeks to understand the conditions under which life can arise and persist, the nature of life's biochemical processes and the potential for life to exist beyond Earth. This field not only focuses on the search for extraterrestrial microbes or more complex life forms, but also investigates the potential habitability of other worlds and the extreme conditions under which life on Earth exists, providing insights into what we might expect to find elsewhere in the cosmos. Astrobiology contributes to our understanding of life in the universe in several profound ways. First, by studying life in extreme environments on Earth, such as hydrothermal vents deep in the ocean, ice-covered lakes in Antarctica, or high-acid environments, it helps scientists understand the broad range of conditions in which life can survive. These studies expand our conception of habitable zones beyond those similar to Earth's temperate regions, 
allowing for the possibility of life in environments previously considered inhospitable. Second, the field plays a crucial role in guiding space exploration missions, both crewed and uncrewed. Missions to Mars, Europa, Titan and Enceladus, for example, are designed with astrobiological questions in mind, searching for signs of past or present life and assessing the habitability of these worlds. This involves the development and deployment of sophisticated instruments capable of detecting biosignatures, the chemical, isotopic or morphological signs that could indicate the presence of life. Additionally, Astrobiology intersects with the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, SETI, by considering not only the possibilities for microbial life, but also the potential for technologically advanced civilizations in the universe. It helps define the parameters for SETI efforts, including what types of signals to look for and where to search for them. Finally, astrobiology enriches our understanding of our place in the universe. By studying the processes by which life could arise and identifying the cosmic factors essential for habitability, astrobiology addresses some of the most profound questions. How unique is Earth? Is there life elsewhere in the universe? And what could that life look like? Through the lens of astrobiology, we gain a broader perspective on life's potential to flourish throughout the cosmos and the remarkable diversity of environments that could host it. Astrobiologists face the complex task of defining life in a way that encompasses all possible forms it might take, not just those familiar to us on Earth. At its core, the definition of life used by astrobiologists typically includes a set of criteria such as the ability to metabolize energy, reproduce, evolve through natural selection, and maintain a state of order, homeostasis. Because life beyond Earth might not share the same biochemical foundation as terrestrial life, Astrobiologists aim for a broad and inclusive definition that allows for the wide range of possibilities that life might exhibit across the cosmos. In their search for life beyond Earth, astrobiologists are on the lookout for both microbial life and more complex organisms, including those that could exhibit signs of intelligence. For microbial life, the search often focuses on detecting biosignatures or bioindicators, Signs that could indirectly indicate the presence of life. These could include specific combinations of gases in a planet's atmosphere that are unlikely to coexist without biological processes, organic compounds on extraterrestrial surfaces, or patterns in surface geology that suggest biological activity. Regarding more complex life forms, astrobiologists consider a range of possibilities, from multicellular organisms that might live in the oceans beneath the icy crusts of moons like Europa or Enceladus, to hypothetical intelligent beings capable of creating technology detectable from Earth. The latter ties into the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, SETI, which primarily focuses on detecting technological signs, technosignatures, like radio transmissions or other forms of communication. Astrobiologists also entertain the possibility of life forms based on entirely different biochemistries from what we know, such as life that might exist in the liquid methane lakes of Titan, Saturn's largest moon. These theoretical life forms would not rely on water as a solvent or carbon as the basis of their biology, challenging our Earth-centric view of what life is and how it functions. The overarching goal is not just to find life, but to understand the conditions that lead to its emergence and the range of environments in which it can thrive. In doing so, astrobiology seeks to address some of the most fundamental questions about the nature of life itself, its diversity throughout the universe, and our place within it. Several locations within our solar system hold promise for finding evidence of past or present life, largely due to their potential to host liquid water, a crucial ingredient for life as we understand it. Mars stands out as one of the most promising candidates. The discovery of ancient river valleys, lake beds, and the presence of minerals that form in water suggest that Mars once had liquid water on its surface and possibly maintains reserves of water ice and even liquid water beneath its surface today. This makes it a prime target for missions seeking signs of past microbial life. Europa, one of Jupiter's moons, is another exciting location. Beneath its icy crust, Europa is believed to harbor a global subsurface ocean of salty liquid water heated by tidal forces from Jupiter. 
This internal heat source could provide the energy necessary to support life, making Europa a leading candidate in the search for extraterrestrial life in our solar system. Similarly, Saturn's moon Enceladus has intrigued scientists with its geysers shooting water ice and vapor from cracks in its icy surface, evidence of an underground ocean. Samples collected from these plumes by the Cassini spacecraft have revealed organic molecules, further hinting at the moon's potential to support life. Titan, another one of Saturn's moons, presents a unique environment with its dense atmosphere and lakes of liquid methane and ethane. While Titan's cold temperatures and hydrocarbon-based lakes are far from Earth-like, the existence of complex organic molecules in its atmosphere offers a fascinating environment to explore prebiotic chemistry and alternative life chemistries. Lastly, Venus, with its extreme surface temperatures and thick, acidic atmosphere, might seem an unlikely place to find life. However, recent re-evaluation of past data and the controversial detection of phosphine, a potential biosignature gas, in its atmosphere, have sparked interest in the possibility of microbial life existing in the planet's temperate upper cloud layers. These locations within our solar system offer diverse environments where life, as we know it or in entirely new forms, might exist or have existed in the past. The ongoing and future missions targeting these worlds aim to unlock the secrets they hold, potentially finding evidence that we are not alone in the universe. Studying the origins of life on Earth provides crucial insights into the potential for life on other planets by helping us understand the conditions and processes that may lead to the emergence of life. The central hypothesis is that if life arose on Earth through a sequence of natural processes, similar conditions on other worlds could potentially lead to analogous outcomes. Early Earth was a hostile environment with volcanic activity, a lack of oxygen, and frequent meteorite impacts. Yet, it is within this setting that life is believed to have emerged around 3.5 to 4 billion years ago. By examining how life began and evolved under these conditions, scientists can identify the key ingredients and environmental factors necessary for life. These include the presence of liquid water, an energy source such as sunlight or chemical reactions, and the availability of organic molecules that can form the building blocks of life. One of the fundamental insights gained from Earth's history is the concept of the habitable zone around a star, the region where temperatures allow for liquid water to exist on a planet's surface. This concept extends our search for life beyond our solar system to exoplanets that orbit their stars in these habitable zones. Moreover, Life on Earth has demonstrated incredible resilience and adaptability, thriving in extreme environments once thought inhospitable. From deep-sea hydrothermal vents and acidic hot springs to the dry valleys of Antarctica and the upper atmosphere, extremophiles, organisms that thrive in extreme conditions, expand our understanding of the potential habitability of other worlds. For instance, the discovery of life in Earth's subsurface biosphere suggests that subsurface oceans on moons like Europa or Enceladus could also harbor life. Furthermore, understanding the chemical pathways that might have led to the emergence of life on Earth guides the search for biosignatures on other planets. For example, the study of prebiotic chemistry and the conditions under which organic molecules form and assemble into more complex structures informs the design of instruments for space missions, enabling them to detect potential markers of life. In essence, by unraveling the story of how life originated and adapted on Earth, scientists can develop testable hypotheses about the existence of life elsewhere in the universe. This Earth-centric knowledge base not only directs the search for extraterrestrial life, but also helps us interpret the data collected from distant worlds, enhancing our understanding of life's potential ubiquity in the cosmos. Missions to Mars, Europa and Enceladus stand at the forefront of humanity's quest to discover extraterrestrial life, each targeting unique environments within our solar system that harbor the potential for life beyond Earth. By delving into the conditions of these celestial bodies, these missions aim to uncover crucial data that could indicate the presence of life or the potential for habitability. Mars missions have a rich history of exploring the red planet's potential for life, driven by its Earth-like qualities in the past, including the presence of liquid water. 
Current and upcoming missions, such as NASA's Perseverance rover and ESA's ExoMars rover, focus on examining Mars' climate, geology, and potential biosignatures. By analyzing soil and rock samples, investigating atmospheric composition, and searching for subsurface water or ice, these missions seek evidence of past microbial life or organic molecules, which would significantly shift our understanding of life's distribution in the universe. Europa missions pivot to the icy moons of the gas giants, where Jupiter's moon Europa is a prime candidate in the search for life. Its presumed subsurface ocean, hidden beneath a thick ice shell and possibly warmed by tidal heating from its gravitational interaction with Jupiter, makes Europa a tantalizing target. NASA's upcoming Europa Clipper mission aims to probe Europa's habitability, scrutinizing the moon's ice shell, potential water plumes, and chemical composition for signs that it could support life, drawing us closer to understanding the possibilities of life in ocean worlds. Enceladus missions are inspired by the stunning discovery of water ice plumes on Saturn's moon Enceladus by the Cassini spacecraft, hinting at an underground ocean that could host life. The interaction of this ocean with Enceladus's rocky core might create environments where chemical reactions could support life, generating organic molecules. Future missions are expected to directly sample these plumes, analyzing the water and ice for organic compounds and signs of biological activity offering a direct method to assess the Moon's potential for life. Together, the exploration efforts on Mars, Europa and Enceladus are pivotal to our ongoing search for life in the cosmos. They expand our knowledge of the solar system's habitability, guide the development of life detection strategies, and set the stage for future missions that will further investigate the mysteries of life beyond Earth. Through these endeavors, we inch closer to answering the age-old question of whether we are alone in the universe, pushing the boundaries of our understanding of life's potential to thrive in the far reaches of space. Extremophiles, organisms that thrive in conditions once thought to be completely inhospitable to life, have profoundly shifted our understanding of the limits of life's potential habitats. Before their discovery, life was assumed to require stable, moderate environments similar to those found in many regions of Earth. However, the discovery of extremophiles surviving in extreme heat, cold, acidity, radiation, pressure, and even in the vacuum of space has significantly broadened the criteria for habitable environments both on Earth and potentially on other planets. These organisms demonstrate that life can exist in environments previously deemed uninhabitable, such as near-boiling hydrothermal vents on the ocean floor in acidic hot springs within the ice of Antarctica, in highly saline lakes, and deep underground in rock cracks where sunlight never penetrates. Some can withstand the harsh radiation and vacuum of space for extended periods. This resilience challenges traditional views and suggests that life could survive in seemingly hostile environments across the solar system and beyond. In the context of astrobiology, extremophiles have expanded the search for extraterrestrial life. Worlds once overlooked or deemed less likely to host life, such as Mars with its extreme cold and dryness, Europa and Enceladus with their subsurface oceans beneath icy crusts, and even Titan with its methane lakes and extremely cold temperatures, are now considered prime candidates in the search for life beyond Earth. Moreover, the mechanisms extremophiles use to survive can inform the search for biosignatures or signs of life on other planets. By understanding how these organisms adapt to extreme conditions, scientists can better hypothesize about the kind of life forms that might exist elsewhere and the biosignatures they might produce. This knowledge guides the development of instruments for space missions, allowing them to detect signs of life that are much different from what we traditionally recognize. In essence, extremophiles have significantly widened the scope of astrobiological research, highlighting the remarkable adaptability of life and prompting a re-evaluation of the conditions considered necessary for life to exist. This has led to a more inclusive and imaginative search for life in the universe, reaffirming that life might not only be more resilient than previously thought, but also possibly more widespread throughout the cosmos.
The discovery of extraterrestrial life would stand as a monumental milestone in human history, reshaping our understanding of the universe and our place within it. The extent and nature of its impact on human culture and society would vary greatly depending on whether the life forms discovered were simple organisms or intelligent beings. Scientifically, such a discovery would revolutionize the fields of biology, chemistry, and astrobiology, forcing a re-evaluation of our fundamental concepts of life. It would broaden our understanding of life's potential forms, adaptations, and evolutions, pushing the boundaries of science to new frontiers. This paradigm shift would likely catalyze a surge in interest and investment in space exploration and research, inspiring new generations to pursue scientific inquiries and explore the unknown. Philosophically and religiously, the revelation could prompt profound introspection across diverse cultures and belief systems. The existence of extraterrestrial life might challenge long-held doctrines about humanity's uniqueness and purpose, sparking debates and discussions that could alter the core beliefs of many religions and philosophical schools of thought. This period of reflection could lead to an expanded understanding of our place in the cosmos and the nature of existence itself. Culturally, the acknowledgement of life beyond Earth would likely permeate every form of human expression, from art and literature to music and media. It could usher in a renaissance of creativity driven by the newfound knowledge of our cosmic companions. Societal values might evolve to emphasize the importance of science and education, fostering a global community more united in its quest for understanding and exploration. Technological and security concerns would become paramount if the discovered extraterrestrial life forms exhibited signs of intelligence. Questions about how to communicate with them and what precautions to take to ensure the safety and security of humanity would necessitate international collaboration to establish protocols for extraterrestrial contact. This scenario would test our ability to come together as a species to face a common unknown. Psychologically, the impact on individuals could range widely, from exhilaration at the confirmation of life beyond Earth to existential anxiety about humanity's role in the universe. This discovery could fundamentally alter personal identities and worldviews, offering a new perspective on our connection to the cosmos and each other. The discovery of extraterrestrial life would mark a pivotal moment in human history, with the potential to transform our scientific understanding, challenge our philosophical and religious beliefs, inspire cultural evolution, raise technological and security questions, and profoundly affect individual psychologies. It represents an opportunity for significant growth and unity in our collective pursuit of knowledge and understanding of the universe. In preparation for the monumental potential discovery of alien life, comprehensive measures are being taken across scientific, philosophical, legal and communicational domains. These efforts aim to ensure that humanity can responsibly and effectively navigate the complexities and implications of such a groundbreaking event. Scientific and research-based preparations involve rigorous protocols for the verification of extraterrestrial life discoveries to both confirm authenticity and prevent biological contamination between Earth and extraterrestrial ecosystems. Agencies like NASA, along with international bodies like the Committee on Space Research, COSPAR, have established planetary protection policies designed to safeguard extraterrestrial environments from Earth-born contamination and vice versa. In the event of potential biosignature detection, a stringent verification process involving independent analyses and corroborations is essential to confirm the discovery conclusively. International cooperation and legal frameworks are critical for addressing the legal and ethical dimensions associated with extraterrestrial life. The Outer Space Treaty, the cornerstone of international space law, lays down principles for outer space's peaceful use and includes guidelines on contamination prevention and the sharing of discoveries. Given the treaty's origins in 1967, there's an acknowledged need for updates or new treaties to specifically tackle issues related to extraterrestrial life discoveries and interstellar communication. Communication strategies are being developed to manage the dissemination of information regarding the discovery to the public. This not only involves the initial announcement, but also sustained engagement with the public to cultivate an understanding of the discovery's implications. 
Efforts include workshops and forums that bring together scientists, communicators, ethicists and policymakers to formulate strategies for managing public reaction and ensuring the information's accuracy and responsible presentation. Ethical and philosophical considerations are at the forefront of preparing for the discovery of alien life, especially if intelligent. Discussions are ongoing about our moral responsibilities towards alien life forms, including respecting their autonomy, preserving their habitats, and the ethical ramifications of interstellar communication or exploration. These considerations aim to formulate a framework that respects both the integrity of alien life and our obligations as explorers. SETI protocols have been developed by those in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence community, outlining the procedures for verifying and announcing signals from non-Earth origins. These protocols advocate for international verification, transparency and careful messaging, ensuring that any announcement is both credible and responsibly communicated. These preparations signify a proactive stance towards the multifaceted challenges and opportunities the discovery of extraterrestrial life would present. As our capabilities and the search for life beyond our planet progress, these plans will adapt to new insights and challenges, ensuring that humanity is prepared to face one of its most profound milestones responsibly. In the vast canvas of imagination painted by science fiction, the portrayal of aliens has deeply influenced our collective expectations of extraterrestrial life. From the grotesque and menacing creatures of H.G. Wells' The War of the Worlds, to the benevolent and wise entities in Arthur C. Clarke's 2001 A Space Odyssey, science fiction has explored a plethora of alien forms and civilizations. These depictions have not only fueled our curiosity, but have also shaped our scientific quests. For instance, the humanoid form, a body with two legs, two arms and a head, has become a staple in both science fiction and the public's expectation of alien life, despite the incredible diversity of life forms that could exist in the universe based on the conditions of their home planets. This fascination has spurred scientists and astronomers to search the cosmos for signs of life, guiding the instruments of our space probes and the algorithms of our listening devices. As we scan the heavens with radio telescopes, part of our search is driven by the hope of finding civilizations akin to those imagined by science fiction writers. The legacy of these stories is a testament to how human creativity can inspire the pursuit of knowledge, encouraging us to ponder not just whether we are alone in the universe, but what forms life might take across the stars. The quest to find extraterrestrial intelligence is a monumental endeavor that sees both governmental and private institutions playing pivotal roles, each bringing unique resources and perspectives to the table. Governmental agencies like NASA and the European Space Agency offer a wealth of scientific expertise and access to state-of-the-art facilities. They coordinate large-scale missions, deploying sophisticated satellites and telescopes designed to scan the cosmos for signs of life, such as the Kepler Space Telescope, which has discovered thousands of exoplanets. These agencies are also responsible for setting international standards and protocols for messaging extraterrestrial intelligences should we ever detect them. On the other side of this cosmic pursuit are private institutions and individuals who infuse the search with innovation and flexibility. Entities like the Breakthrough Listen Project, funded by tech billionaire Yuri Milner, leverage cutting-edge technology and massive financial investments to extend the reach and efficiency of the search. This initiative has significantly increased the amount of cosmic data being analyzed, employing advanced algorithms to sift through signals for potential messages from distant civilizations. Private institutions often pioneer novel approaches and technologies, pushing the boundaries of what's feasible and often collaborating with governmental bodies to share findings and resources. Together, these diverse institutions amplify humanity's ability to listen for whispers from the cosmos. By combining the rigor of governmental scientific endeavors with the nimbleness of private innovation, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence becomes a multifaceted quest, uniting the world in a shared dream of discovering we're not alone in the universe. International policies and treaties addressing the potential discovery of extraterrestrial life embody a blend of hope, caution, and the aspiration for global cooperation. The cornerstone of these agreements 
is the Outer Space Treaty of 1967, ratified by more than a hundred countries, which establishes that outer space shall be freely explored for the benefit and in the interests of all countries, and that space and celestial bodies are not subject to national appropriation. This treaty sets the stage for how discoveries, including potential extraterrestrial life, should be handled, emphasizing cooperation, peaceful purposes, and sharing information. When it comes to explicitly addressing the discovery of extraterrestrial life, the treaty doesn't provide detailed protocols, but its principles guide subsequent agreements and policies. One such guiding document is the agreement on the activities of states on the Moon and other celestial bodies, also known as the Moon Agreement of 1979, which extends the concept of non-appropriation to the Moon and other celestial bodies. This agreement hints at the management of the resources of the Moon and celestial bodies, implying that any form of extraterrestrial life, if discovered, should be considered the common heritage of mankind. One of the most direct responses to the potential discovery of extraterrestrial life is the set of post-detection protocols developed by the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence SETI, community, though these are not legally binding international laws. These protocols recommend that, upon the detection of extraterrestrial intelligence, the discoverers should verify the signal, inform the international scientific community, and not respond without international consultation and consensus, reflecting a spirit of global cooperation and cautious engagement. International policies and treaties regarding the discovery of extraterrestrial life are built around principles of peace, cooperation, and the common heritage of all humanity. They are designed to ensure that such a profound discovery would be handled in a way that benefits all of humanity, promoting scientific sharing and avoiding the monopolization of knowledge or resources. Navigating the uncharted waters of potential interactions with extraterrestrial life forms brings to the forefront a myriad of ethical considerations, paramount among them being respect for life, non-interference, and the responsibility of stewardship. The foundational principle should be the respect for any form of life we might encounter, acknowledging its intrinsic value and right to exist. This implies a cautious approach to avoid causing harm, whether through physical means or by contaminating its environment with earthly microbes, which could have devastating effects on extraterrestrial ecosystems. The principle of non-interference emerges as a guideline, emphasizing the importance of observing and learning from extraterrestrial life without disrupting its natural evolution or societal structures. This is akin to the prime directive found in the realm of science fiction, but grounded in the real-world imperative to avoid imposing our own values or causing inadvertent harm to extraterrestrial societies. Moreover, the responsibility of stewardship underlines our duty to not only protect these potential life forms and their habitats, but also to preserve the knowledge gained for future generations. This involves making ethical decisions about the sharing of information, ensuring that the discovery benefits humanity as a whole and contributes to our collective understanding of the universe rather than being monopolized for the gain of a few. These ethical considerations demand an interdisciplinary approach, combining insights from science, philosophy and international law to forge guidelines that are respectful, just and forward-looking. As we stand on the brink of potentially one of the most significant discoveries in human history, these principles offer a compass to guide our interactions with extraterrestrial life, ensuring they are carried out with the utmost respect for the unknown. Do you think we will ever find evidence of alien life? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching.